Hey there folks and welcome back to the IMCDB project and today we're going to do a head shaving video with the Defender which I haven't used for quite a while. Using the same thing I used for the face shaving video. As you can see I'm wet from the face shaving video. Uh, the Razor Rock 1X. I haven't done a head shaving video so I wanted to do one just to talk at my bald brethren out there and just chat and a lot of times you know as you know in the head shaving videos i've uh used it just to sort of talk about various things going on in the news and so forth and of course in a face shaving video i was talking about getting outside and fishing and sort of avoiding uh politics but in this video maybe we'll get into a few issues um but Again, for those of you who are interested in head shaving tips, I have made head shaving tips videos before. Just go down and search my videos and you'll find some tips on how to's and and so forth. It is a little more difficult, quite frankly, in my opinion, than face shaving due to all the curves and contours. But there's plenty of people out there that can give you a lot of good tips on head shaving. Folks like Taylor Alejandro in our Head Shaving Group and Ronnie Greer and many, many others, of course, that I'm not mentioning. I don't mean any slight to any of those folks. Uh, just mentioning a, a, a couple that, you know, I talk with from time to time. And so we will get on with our shave today again using the Defender, which I like a lot for head shaving. Pretty aggressive. Uh, or can be at least, depending on the blade. But anyway, a couple of things happened this week in the in the news that I wanted to just touch on. And and first, briefly, just that the whole thing with the Betsy Ross flag and and Kaepernick. Look, I think Kaepernick has the right to say whatever he wants to, and he has, and it. If Nike wants to, you know, ban the, or take, or not put out shoes with the Betsy Ross flag on it because of his, you know, sensitivity to it, then that's fine. You know, Nike can do whatever they want to. If you don't like it, you don't have to buy it. You know, it's, it's as simple as that. Uh, I think it's silly, personally, to be so reactive to every little thing. Uh, but he has every right to to advocate and, and, and they have every right as a company to to listen to whomever they want. And you can simply choose who to spend your money with. You can spend it with some other company if you don't like it. And I didn't get all riled up. I just think it's silly, you know, personally. Uh, I think a lot of people are, are badly in need of, of uh, history lessons. And even some of these candidates who are running from office, some of the things they say at, at times, you know, when they're talking about, I saw a Frederica Wilson the other day, I think who's a representative, I want to say from Florida, somewhere. And they were referring to border control individuals who had this group on Facebook who had made, you know, off-collar comments about AOC and had made some comments that were not particularly kind as it relates to migrants and their treatment, which I don't agree with. Uh, I certainly don't, am not in favor of anybody being, you know, treated poorly and so forth or celebrating that sort of treatment. That's in very poor taste. But anyway, Frederica Wilson was standing up giving a, I guess a speech somewhere going, you know, we're gonna shut them down. Who do they think they are making fun of Congress uh, we're going to shut them down. And later she went on to, to talk about threats being illegal against crime groups, which, which it is. Threats should be illegal against anybody. So if they're making threats and so forth, um, they shouldn't be. And I don't support that sort of situation. But making fun of people and her saying, you know, we're going to shut them down. For make, that is crazy. That, that, you know, the First Amendment <laughs> is clear. And that is covered speech, you know, making fun of. Now, the threats, no, but my goodness, when you have people in Congress this way who are talking about shutting down speech just because they don't like it because they're making fun of, that's scary. 
And this is sort of the, this is sort of where we appear to be going. And it's extremely frightening to me when people start talking about stifling speech because, you know, they just don't agree with it or it's hateful. Uh, I believe speech should just operate on the First Amendment principle, period. You don't have to like it. You don't have to consume speech on social media that you do not like, but I do not, I am not in favor of our tech overlords stifling speech on behalf of the government or sort of agent, because the government cannot stifle your speech, but private companies certainly can and do. The problem is uh, these social media companies pretty much monopolize the public square. You know, there's no soapbox to get on anymore and, and really and, and talk to people in your community. It is social media. And so when you have these companies, primarily in Silicon Valley, deciding what and what is and is not acceptable speech, it's scary. And so I just believe that let's just operate on First Amendment principles. And some people aren't going to like things that are said, uh, but that's the way it's always been. You don't like everything. I mean, so anyway, that to me was, was really scary here in Frederica, Frederica Wilson talking about, we're going to shut people down and they're making fun of Congress. And I'm like, what? I mean, it's, it's crazy. Then I saw Kamala Harris talking about, you know, second amendment issues and saying, you know, she would let she expected when she was president for Congress to act, and if she didn't, she would. And once again, I'm thinking, these politicians apparently need to watch Schoolhouse Rock. You remember Saturday cartoons from back in the 70s? Schoolhouse Rock, where they talked about uh, government and civics. And remember that? I'm just a bill sitting on Capitol Hill. And they talked about the various branches of government and their purpose. And, and the president of the United States doesn't get to make an enact law. You know, that's for Congress to do. And so it's funny you have a lot of these people who are already in branches of government charged with making law and they do nothing, such as Kamala Harris. I'm like, do something now. You're in the body of government to make law, to affect change if you want to. Don't wait until you're president and do this, this uh, executive order crap, which is... The president clearly does not have the authority to make law, but they've been using ex executive orders over the last, actually for quite some time, as a w sort of end around. And personally, I am not comfortable with that. I do not like it. It is an end around to get around Congress. That's not what the president of the United States can do, should be doing. And, and everyone from Trump, Obama, Bush, you go way, way back, they've been doing it. And Congress really should should step in and do their job as it applies to, you know, whatever is necessary for any given issue, especially immigration and, and 2A and all these things. If, if they want to enact laws and, and so forth, then they should do it while they're in Congress, not as president of the United States, like they're kings and tyrants. Um, via executive order. That's just my feeling on it. Uh, I get very uncomfortable when these politicians start talking about as president. I'm like, well, you're in Congress now. Do your freaking job. That's the way I look at it. Just do your job now. But they won't because they don't want to suffer the consequence and blowback that there might be as it relates to actually doing their job. Migration uh Immigration, I should say, legislation to reform the system is badly needed. We need workers from, you know, our southern neighbors. It's clear. We benefit from it. They benefit from it. But we need a system that allows them to apply and obtain work visas or whatever it is efficiently. So they don't have to wait years on end. But this thing of what some politicians are, are basically suggesting is wide open borders, I am not in favor of. We need to control who comes in. We need to know who's coming in. We need to make sure that vaccinations and no criminal records or no ties to terrorist organizations and all these other things. We need to get a handle on it. But Congress has been asleep at the wheel 
for at least the last 30, 40 years, and they're not going to do anything about it. They're just going to wax poetic about it while they're running for president. And then, you know, make threats that they'll, you know, use executive orders, which has been done. Obama did the DACA thing under EXO, which is illegal in my opinion. But then again, it's just my opinion. Again, that needs to come through Congress, but um, they need to do something because it, it is in bad need of fixing. But I don't think that offering free health care, every Democratic candidate, on the debate stage, pretty much about like, yeah, free health care. We're offering all this for folks who come across the border illegally is the answer. In fact, it's a lot to entice even more to make that dangerous trek. And they end up in terrible conditions, some dying, which is terrible. We don't want that. We want them to be able to apply and come here efficiently and do the good work that they do and all the rest of it. I think we all recognize there's a benefit to everybody. Um, but it needs to be orderly and we, we just can't take it upon ourselves to, or they can't take it upon themselves just to waltz over and put their lives at risk, put their children's lives at risk based on these things that we're just off. Oh, free healthcare. We can't even pay for healthcare for the citizens who are here now. I don't know how in the world we're supposed to pay for Folks who are just coming and, and probably will be enticed to come in either in even larger numbers. Medicare and so and Social Security and all these things are about ready to go broke as it is. So, folks, I don't know where this money's supposed to come from. I really don't, but I guess we will find out. Well, I've been touching up all these spots. Again, the uh, Fender does a good job. Little, um, I find that when I use it once in a while. It works better than when I use it every day. That's just me. But it has definitely done a good job. And I hope you don't mind me blabbing. I like to blab about current events and so forth. One final thing. Um, there was, uh, AOC was, you know, making a lot of allegations about border patrol or border protection. And I have friends who work for border protection and there were members of a Facebook group saying all sorts of things. Just because you're a member of a Facebook group doesn't mean you agree with everything that's posted there. And her attitude was, because there was like 9,400 members, that they all believe or or condone some of the ugly things that were said. And they do not. Uh, there's a lot of Facebook groups that many of us have been members of, and we don't agree with all the content there. We have debates. There are fights. People get kicked out. And so for her to just assume everybody agrees with with these ugly posts. I think she's just using it deliberately to bash uh, CBP and it's disgraceful. And, and just from day to day, the stuff she does is just ridiculous and absurd. And you know, what are you gonna do? That's where we are now. But anyway, um, again, we use the 1X soap today. We use the Razorock F400 and we use the Defender. It's been a while since I've done a head shaving video. Hope everybody enjoyed it. I hope you didn't mind too much the political babbling just my opinion you don't have to to uh agree but hope you at least take it into consideration thanks for watching until next time i've been your host cdb you're not god bless